After 13 studio albums, two greatest hits albums, two live albums, over 2,000 live shows, and 9 million records sold in the U.S. alone, the rock, rap, reggae fusion act 311 has cemented its place among the great American rock bands. And there's no slowing down as a band prepares to take the stage at the Norva on February 13th. Vocalist and guitarist Nick Hexum joins us now to chat about the band's legacy. Nick, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, let's talk about genre first, man. It feels wrong to put 311 in any one genre category. Uh, going back to the beginning, what was the process like to find 311's signature sound? Well, I think that we always just had an attitude of like anything goes, anything we like, our music, um, ignore, you know, boundaries of like, you can't mix this with that. And we just had a very wide a variety of, of listening tastes. We were we were into punk rock, we were into hip hop, we were into funk, we were into jazz, um, classic rock, you know, everything. So we're just like, let's just put it all in our music. And it was a bit of a <clears throat> problem for us at first because in the early 90s, it was all about grunge. And, um, you know, we the, the people liked us, but the, the industry was like looking for the next sort of uh, Pearl Jam kind of music, which I enjoy that music too. Um, Alice in Chains, I love that stuff. But anyway, we were just like, anything goes, let's mix it all up and just see what happens. And this new album that we're just putting the finishing touches on right now, I call it like 311 on steroids. Everything <laughs> about it is better. Better riffs and choruses and lyrics, just trying to keep finding ways to improve. The band has been with a few different labels over the years. Uh, you guys were also independent at the beginning and then again in the 2010s. How has the business part of the music industry changed during your career? Well, in the 90s, the label would pay tour support to get you on the road to try and sell CDs. And then after Napster and stuff, it was a complete switch where you would basically give away your music for free just so you could go out and tour and make money doing that. So that that's a total shift of, of what was like the lost leader. Um, but, and, but we kind of took our cue from like jam bands and the Grateful Dead and said, we're going to be a live band first. So we already kind of decided to just go on tour every summer, no matter what, whether we had a new album or not, before the whole collapse of the recorded music side happened. So it, it didn't affect us a whole lot. And I've always just believed that like live music has existed for like 50,000 years of one guy playing a drum while someone else dances. Like that's, that's the core of what music is, is, is live performance and that spontaneity of, of what happens when you're sharing the energy with the crowd. So that's always been kind of our first priority. Speaking of performing live, uh, the Norva, where your show is on the 13th, uh, is really popular with bands because it's it's pretty small and intimate in comparison to like an arena, uh, which you guys also play. So do you have a preference for, you know, the style of venue? Do you like to be more up close and personal or is there nothing that beats tens of thousands of fans cheering you on? I like both. I mean, I think of great shows in Virginia back in the day at like the Boathouse. Yeah. Like that was crazy. <laughs> I but I love playing outside under the stars, especially when you start like right when the sun's going down and you can see everybody lose their inhibitions as the as the light goes away. But, uh, you know, our, our first love was playing in clubs and just rocking the place with that tight energy. I, I got to say this, man. So I started listening to 311 uh, when I was a kid with uh, my dad in the car. Do you see a lot of different generations of fans at your shows these days? That is a really a nice new development is that you'll see parents bring their kids. And I've, that's, I've always said that like music is like the international language and it, it gets people to bond that might not otherwise. So that to, to have people bring in their kids, you know, we've, we've heard of lots of families that have been formed through our fan base, like people met their spouse so it's it's something that really just kind of transcends rock and roll to see that we're being like a, a bonding source for people. 
Well, yeah, it's definitely something me and my dad still bond over, and he's incredibly jealous that I have the opportunity to interview you. And that show is February 13th at the Norva. You can find tickets on 311's website or the Norva's website. Nick Hexum, it's been an absolute pleasure, sir. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me.